Hi everyone and welcome back. It is Thursday, February the second, and we're gonna do we're gonna go back a little bit and do a soul contract reading. I have the daily news up for today and the contract reading starting off the week of February. But I want to go back. I, I haven't done these in a while. I feel that it may have been like maybe a year or two. I don't remember. But we're going to do a soul contract reading and see what comes up. Let's see. Show me here in soul contracts. And remember these soul contracts can be romantic and non-romantic. I started these readings five years ago. I, they, they could be romantic, non-romantic. I'll know more when we get into the reading. Let's see. Show me soul contracts for today. Embrace your emotions. This is number 18 here. So this is a number nine. Something is completing. Don't push down your feelings or judge your emotions. And there could be a, this will be mixed feelings will be here about what is being complete, what has been completed, what has been cleared. There, there could be mixed feelings about it. You know, a multitude of feelings could be coming to the surface about a, an ending. Now is canines or endings, they're points of completion. And it's about not not um, judging that, just allowing it to come through. Because I feel that, especially based on this morning's readings, the paths that people are completing, it would be about having had maybe not even only considered their positive emotions or not even maybe looking more at the other people, romantic, non-romantic, as opposed to looking at themselves. You know, and and being true to the nature of what the experience was making them feel as opposed to making excuses or for the other person or for the experience itself, romance and non-romantic. Now, I feel that there's this completion in all those emotions that were stifled. They are, is the ending, that's what you're left with like that. You know, what you may have been willing to change and make it a positive in hopes that you were going to get what you wanted or made it about the person and what they need to do about their own healing all of that it, and it, as opposed to truly looking at the truth to the nature of how the experience was making you feel because even with the daily news or the, the akasha reading i forgot which one i was talking about people that like to use the term childhood wounding which seven years i've been public doing this work i don't use that a lot because I, I know that if, if you're dealing with someone that you, and you're saying they're childhood wounded, you will be equally wounded to them. Because usually a healed person isn't paired up with a wounded person. You're not their psychologist. So you will need as much healing as they would need. And what you would probably do is make it all about the positive and, and not be true to the nature of how the experience should be making you feel under circumstances that dealing with the unhealed person will put you in. You will make it about their childhood wounding or about them and what they need to heal and what they need to do about their long life and the decisions that they need, need to make as opposed to making it about you and being true to the nature of what the experience should be making you feel if you weren't willing to stuff those feelings down in order to get what you want and hope that the outcome is going to be what you want it to be, which is usually getting the person if we're speaking romantically. So somebody's left with their feelings and having to deal with everything that they need to deal with in their own wounding and the true reason of why the person crossed their path, romantic, non-romantic, or the experience crossed their path, romantic, non-romantic. Every experience that comes across your path is about you and it's not about the other person. It's always about you. And how you deal with it it determines how wounded you were and what you were willing to put up with and stifle and, and put um, strawberries on and, and point at the person and them needing wounded. It, it, it still tells how wounded you were. And it doesn't mean that they didn't need their, their wounded. They, they didn't have childhood wounded. It means that you were equally wounded like that. And it, and it's sometimes the way that I would state in the past, and I had to state that again this morning in the daily news, is that sometimes when you, when you're paired up with people energetically, and and it's like and, they, and you say they're childhood wounded. Well, it, sometimes that could be the case. Sometimes it could not be the case. So it, sometimes it could be that if they were healed, they wouldn't want you. Because usually when you're healed, you look at the people around you and experience differently. You wouldn't even be near those people 
or talk to them or give to them or be involved in them in any type of way. When you're wounded and you stayed in a person's childhood wounded, that's why they're treating you in this way and that way. It means that sometimes it can mean that you could be right. And if they were healed, they would not be involved with you whatsoever. It doesn't mean if they were healed, if they were healed, they would treat you better. It could sometimes mean that if they were healed, they wouldn't even be on that path with you. It can mean that sometimes. Or it can mean that if they were healed, it would treat you better. But what it always means is that you were, you were just as wounded as them like that. And it may have been about how much you were willing to focus on the person and their need for healing and them potentially being childhood wounded or whatever, being wrong with them. And how much you were willing to use that as an excuse of not looking at your own wounding or what could have been wrong with you for still being attracted to the person because you would have been attracted to their wounding like that because they obviously would not be have been able to give you the best of themselves to you because they were wounded and even if they weren't wounded maybe you wouldn't be the one that they would choose to get their best self to it's like so you don't, don't use things like childhood wounding if you're not a psychologist like that can mean a whole lot of stuff somebody stuck with their feelings as you speak loudly express your love through your actions yeah the act the person's actions and i will state this a lot also the action speaks louder words if you're not wounded you know that that is the person's actions now it's not about they're wounded and that's why their action is this that and the other that there doesn't correspond with how you want them to treat you is because their actions are showing you that the relationship is unhealthy and you're still sticking around you're wounded too so it would be because actions love is an action word action speak loudly now in action speak loudly is like that so is and you're gonna have to embrace your emotions regarding um what actions told you that you were not willing to accept romance and non-romantic what the actions told you that you were not willing to accept now and don't push down to judge those feelings or emotions and i feel that somebody's actions were speaking loud and clear and somebody was pushing down those feelings you know and and and, and maybe saying where well, the person is childhood wounded no even if they were it's still their actions is it's like so somebody's left with their feelings And now they'll pay more attention to the actions. Actions speak loud in words, you know. And that can take the romance, especially my moon being in Capricorn. That can take the romance out of things for people. Because they like the words. It could be because it makes it very practical, the relationship. It makes it very grounded, down-to-earth, practical, realistic. It has substance because the relationship is based on actions. Because... Feelings and actions align. Feelings, actions align. If they love you, it shows through their actions like that. Now, love is an action verb. Okay. If the person isn't doing that, and they're telling you, because this is action speak loudly, so obviously they were telling you that they love you, or you were hoping that they did, and their actions weren't showing you that. So it <laughs> It would be that, so you must have said, well, their childhood wounded or made excuses for them, as opposed to saying, well, I might be wounded because their actions are showing me something and I'm still loving them. And their actions are showing me that they don't love me, you know, or their words are showing me that they don't love me because it's not matching their actions and I'm still loving them. So it might be that I'm wounded. It doesn't mean that they weren't, they used to, they could be stupid. You were probably equally so. Now, is also where when people are go on paths because they're wounded they encounter people that are equally wounded they encounter substance 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 i don't know how you say it i call it drugs and other wounded people they encounter that on paths because they're going through a path of soul's growth and evolution sometimes you're one of the people that they encounter you know, is, and they could be on those paths, and the path is exhilarating. The people that they encounter romantically, it could be sexually exhilarating, or it could be toxic. They could encounter that person that, um, 
is excuses their actions also that is wounded and excuse the actions and push down and hide their own feelings regarding what the true to the nature emotions would be regarding the exchange with the person just because the person sees the, and the person can say what well, this person is wounded but they'll still want the person and they'll be able to push down because they'll be wounded too and it's like these paths are concluding for somebody for some of you it's like going down the path of drugs and alcohol also going down the path and you include you encounter people that are wounded too you know excuse your actions not line up with your words or the asthma and they'll push their own down to get you because they're wounded and not be true to the nature of how the experience is supposed to be make them feel but even on top of that, they'll say you're wounded, but they'll still be wounded. It's like all of them are damn wounded. They're just as toxic as the drug and the alcohol. It's like, and, and the, that experience alone could be exhilarating. It's like, I'm doing all this to this person. This person is stuck, and they're saying this because my childhood wounded. They're saying this, and they're willing to take it because they could get me in the end. And it's all like drugs and alcohol. It's all toxic. Or it could be, it, or and then it could be other people. It was all about sex, and it was exciting, and it was, and this set person giving the sex thing. This person's gonna want me because this isn't boring. This is exhilarating, and, it, and it's all toxic. It's all like drugs and alcohol. It's all toxic, like that. Even the one that is petting you and being nice with the most and feelings. Oh, your childhood wounded. Oh, I understand why you're treating me like this. I'm pushing out my feelings. I understand it. Oh, it's because your childhood wounded. Oh, and I'm so good and nice to you. It's, it's uh, that person that is like that is also wounded, and something is wrong with them. Because they're feeding into that, this excuse of this person's actions it, towards them. Because they hope that they'll get the person in the end too, romance and non romance So all of them are damn wounded. This completion, nine. Now, now they're going to be left with embracing those emotions that they push down in order to get what they want. Or to hope that, in hopes that it would bring them what they want. Imagining the good feelings. As opposed to being true to the nature of how the experience would cause a healthy person to feel. Knowing that it was toxic and they need to not be dealing with that person, period. Not expect anything from the person, not feed anything to the person, not have an ulterior motive of making excuses for the person. In hopes that you're going to get with the person. Because you will be wounded. That would be like a psychologist taking advantage of a patient. I don't use things like childhood wounding like that. So it's like, that's what's happening here. So they love with their feelings. Now we have soul contracts. Honesty is essential. There's somebody with a mask. To be a loving person is important that we speak truthfully and in a loving manner. Now, some people are left with those feelings that they refuse to embrace. Now, some people are being approached. And this person is going to approach you. They're going to tell you something. Because sometimes the people that are like, they, these people here, they could be like, what do you call it? Um, they could be. Not codependent, but how do you say when when the when the people they co-sign on the person's actions towards them too? Enable. They can enable like that. Okay, so but they enable with a the objective is to get what they want in the end so they're willing to enable that's why they're willing to push down those feelings like that and even assign terms like this could their childhood wounded like that you know and, and that they could be childhood wounded but i stated when they heal that they may not even want you period that's when people get healed they usually don't navigate towards the people that they were navigating towards on their healing journey don't think that they navigated towards you because you were healed usually not because if you were you wouldn't have put up with them and made excuses for them period you would have made love this person cold turkey and wouldn't have looked back just like a psychologist that would have given a person a diagnosis 
would not be dealing with them, expecting anything from them, not doing none of that. Not petting and calling and aiding them either. So those are over and they're left with the feelings that they pushed down. They're left with having to deal with the fact that they were actually wounded. The person that was wounded or not is healed and they're approaching someone else. Now is... And they're going to be honest. They want to tell you something. It could be that you've already known this person. You've already had dealings with them. You've already had your back turned to them if you know them. This is a soul contract. Not out of anger, but just of freeing people. Not coming to any conclusion of why they were, whatever, whatever, just freeing them. He's, got, he's coming to you with a mask on. He, he wants to reveal something you would tell you the truth about something. He may have had somebody that was holding on to him that was, oh, he's to your childhood. Okay. Or for sex. Or, or he may have been doing it also. Or it may have been drugs or alcohol. It could have been anything. It was whatever it was. It wasn't whoever it was. Was it true to the nature of how the situation should have been making them feel? They were holding on. Or whatever it was, drugs or alcohol, it also masked and pushed down the feelings. Okay. Or the sets or whatever. It was temporary stuff. He wants to tell you something. He's free of that. He wants to tell you something. You're going to be like, who in the hell are you? Because this is for you all that. Or. Or it's going to be. They don't have it to be who in the hell are you like that or this person doesn't have to or to be a situation. This person doesn't have to tell you that because you're already on a journey or path with them or you've already accepted the journey or path. So they don't have to reveal this like that. It's that for you all where this person is approaching you. You're going to be like, who are you? Like not knowing who the person is like that. You don't know that like that. Or is and they uh, or they and they reveal themselves fully that they were in this type of situation that I mentioned, or is somebody you're on the path and journey with, and they don't have to reveal this to you because you're already on the path and journey with now. In either case, they're coming towards a person that is already at peace. Okay, now, and that will be you. This is what is ending. Now let's see. Practice compassion. See things from a different perspective. This practice compassion was over here needing to have compassion with yourself. Don't push down your feelings or judge them like that. Okay, now. And they're left to do that now. Show themselves compassion. But they had the compassion for the person. Their childhood wound. Their this, that, that. Okay. This practice compassion is. For those of you that are already at peace. In your own path with somebody already. They can reveal something to you. Or you can reveal something to them. They want to tell you something. But they don't have to. Because you're already on the path with them. You're already at peace. Or they're already on the path with you. They're already at peace. And you could be telling them something. Revealing something. Or somebody approaching you. They've got out of this situation. A situation like this. And left people that now have to show themselves the compassion that they were showing this person. This person is healed. And they are coming towards you now. 
and they can tell you about this experience and their enablers. <laughs> True love. This love is a once in a lifetime love. Yes, it is. It's just as loving and true as this was that is completing was toxic and enabling. Is what it is here. Okay, everyone, those are soul contracts. Bye.